What's good, you guys? It's your boy Jay Freshman back with another tutorial. Today, I wanted to show you how to use a compressor in its typical purpose, you feel me? Because there's so many things you could do with a compressor. You could use it as a saturation. You could use it as a limiter. You could use it as a gate. Like, it just gets all crazy. But that's just like, you know, thinking outside of the box with it. You know, those are not its main purpose. Its main purpose is more to, like, have the dynamic range be, um less or more but in more um like in typical senses to have a, a less dynamic range and what that means is from the loudest volume to the lowest volume you're bringing it together and that decreases the dynamic range um and just to show you a quick example just look at this meter um don't pay attention to that just look at let's say you had um your kicks hitting around 6 db and your lowest volume is at 27. So everything between that is the dynamic range. And we want to bring it closer. So from that lowest 27, we're going to bring to like 18. And the, the 6 comes down to like, you know, around 9. And that lowers the dynamic range. And it brings it more in front of your face. And that's how you get that more present feel. That's how you get that more in front of your face feel. Like how a lot of you guys want to mix vocals and you really want it to stand out. The compressor will do that because it's not going to, like, without the compressor, you're sounding just going up and down, up and down, and it doesn't really have a focus. Just kind of think about it like a like a Call of Duty game. If you're a sniper and, you know, you're trying to aim at your target, but the scope is moving up and down, and you, you just can't get that um, focus in. So that's, that's what is happening right now when it comes to, like, um your music, your beats, you know, the focus is like getting thrown off because you don't have it focused on the um, actual things that need to be focused on. Like melodies are the main things that should stick out for a listener or the vocals. That's why we always are compressing our vocals. And usually most of the times we're compressing our um, melodies as well because we want those to stand out the most. And that's why we also compress our drums. We want... For the things that you want to stand out the most, you probably want to compress if the dynamic range is too crazy. And see, that was context. You don't need no preset ratio um, at 4 to 5 and your kick set um, negative 16 threshold. No, don't think about it in that way. Just think about it how I just explained it in the context. If you want something to be more focused on and the dynamic range is like too crazy, bring it closer together. And I could just even show you this with the piano. So let's listen to the piano real quick. Don't mind the um, effects I put on it. So I got this little um, plug-in right here. You don't need it. Um, I don't even remember where I got it from. I got this stuff a long time ago. Hold on, it's already compressed. So, I just took it off the limiter. I did this video a few times, I ain't gonna lie, no cap. <laughs> so you see how it's striking, right? And then it goes low. So, I don't have no melodies in this beat, as you can see. But, since I only have the chords, I'm just gonna, um compress the chords because that's the only sound and I want that sound to be more in your face. So if I want that to be more present, I'm gonna have to compress it. Context. So I'm gonna reset the settings. So bring up your fruity limiter. Um, make sure you put it to compress. You know, don't have it at limit. So now we're gonna start off with the main controllers of a compressor. And this is gonna be for like it's going to branch off to all other ones it's going to be universal you feel me that's what i'm trying to say so when you use your threshold the threshold is let's let's look at it you see where my line is this line right here this is the highest peak that i'm at this is the lowest so essentially i want to bring that high peak closer to this line right here to make this more visual, I'm going to just do it like this. 
this is how I like to look at the compressor on the limiter. A lot of people don't know about this option. They just leave it like this and then they see the purple. And you'll see the purple once you um, start to um, boost up your ratio. And that's just showing you what's being um, compressed, the purple part. And that's cool, you know. But to really see it, I will just take that off by pressing that like line at the top. That straight, that straight line right here. So now it's closer to the line. So now once I go back to this plugin, look at it. It looks more linear. Because now I brought the loudest sound and the lowest sound together. And also, let's take a look at the attack. So the reason why it, it's sounding a lot smooth, like understand this, let me just make one caveat. If you're um, new to like, you know, hearing these kind of things, like you're just a beginner beginner and you're not used to hearing how the EQ sounds or reverb or anything like that, I suggest getting your ears trained. Um, you could use soundgym.co or dot, um, yeah, I think it's .co. You could just go on Google. It's soundgym. And this is just a great platform to train your ears. It teaches you how to hear compress compression, um, reverb, EQ, and a lot of different fun games. And it's like daily practices. Trust me, you want to do this if you're serious. Don't be like um, other producers and they just tell you, oh, you just got to keep um, making beats over time, you'll get that air for it. No, dude, that's taking the long route. We can't we can't think in ways like that because then that just slows down the process. We all about moving efficiently, you know. I'm not trying to say, oh, you're going to be a pro in like one month and you're moving that fast. But trust me, this is a lot faster if you focus on what you need to focus on. That's why when a lot of people say they're busy, okay, I don't. I rarely use the word "I'm busy," and if I do use the word "I'm busy," I mean I'm focused right now. Like a lot of people is just busy doing nothing, but when you focus, you're getting shit done. So have that mindset. If you was to just make beats all day, you can make beats all year and still not understand how to use a compressor or hear um the compression going on because you didn't focus on that. So make sure you get that sound training in. But anyways. So I could hear that the beginning of the sound is being like squash. And I know once I say squash, you probably thinking negative right away. But no, it's all about context because, you know, let's say I'm playing the, the piano like real hard, like how I kind of am playing it in the um in this sound. But like, let's say it's just striking at you like, dun, 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 like, but you still want to keep that loudness, but you don't want it to strike too hard. You want to cut off the beginning and, or like curve it and I'm going to give you a better example just look at um, this waveform right here so the transient peak is this that means your initial sound don't worry about this part matter of fact because I ain't trying to confuse you look at this so your sound is like this this is your initial beginning of the sound that's your transient peak so if your attack is low, you're pretty much cutting off this part or curving it. You feel me? It's not going to be that sharp. It's probably going to be like, like this. And this is going to round it out pretty much. That's why in certain cases, you want to do that. In certain cases, you probably won't. Like for your drums, you want your drums to hit. And that's how, you want, and that's how drums hit. They have that big peak, that big transient. So, so when it comes to drums... You probably gonna want to have your um attack a little bit up so that it could start like around here instead of starting right there. You feel me? And then the release is just the opposite of when you want it to cut off or stop compressing, whatever. And it's just that simple, man. But people just trying to make things overcomplicated, and because you guys are not understanding context. You guys are looking at presets that other people are telling you and it's confusing you because it's a whole different context when it comes to you because it's your beat. It's not like you're copying their beat. That's fine if you copy in their beat. Go use their numbers. But I'm trying to show you guys how to like really think about it as a um, creative producer. You know, so let, let's use some context situations. So for a rap vocal, the settings that I would want 
I could even I could tell you the settings while telling you the numbers. First of all, I'm gonna do the threshold to the lowest point. Have my ratio probably at two to one or four to one. See the two to four, the two to one and four to one is good because a lot of engineers they say oh two to one for your vocals or four to one for your drums. Now this is the only like preset I would say that's fair, but you gotta understand why it is because remember and it's simple because the um, higher you go in ratio, the stronger the compressor gets. So obviously the beginning of like one to um five and two to one and four to one those are like you know small um numbers small ratios so it's not going to compress that hard so i will go to two to one for the um for a good ratio setting for the attack i will have my attack up you know because i'm not going to squish my um vocals especially if i'm rapping and i want that explosive to um come out more you feel me more explosive words like bet you won't bet you won't bet you up bet you up bet you up yeah y'all heard that song if you haven't whatever <laughs> if you know you know <laughs> so all those emphasis i want those to stick out and if i have my attack low it's not going to work that way and then the release obviously I, for a rap vocal we're usually rapping fast like our words is getting cut off faster than as if a person was singing so we want our attack to match that i mean we want yeah we want our release to match that like once i say a word um it should just release for that quick second and then you know go, go back over and over again like that instead of like stretching my words you know but anyways that's pretty much it man like So I like when my attack was low so I could round out the piano and the release. I like it fairly um a bit longer because then it's just going to make this it it's a piano, you know. It's a chord at that context. But the main big thing that you want to do after you compress, you got to realize that compression um it lowers your sound. So you want to bring it back up to the where it was originally. So let's take it off. And so it's hitting around 18 dB without it. Now you want to bring it back up to that point. But also remember, since we brought the dynamic range closer together, it made it perceive louder. So now you got to um, just wind back a little bit down. Pretty much, you could just do this by ear, but if your ears is not good, look at where it hits at 18, then if it sounds a little bit louder, just try to match it from there. So. See, the um, compression still sounds a little bit louder, so let me turn it down. Okay, so now when it comes time to A, B it, now you can make sense of it rather than if it was too low then you think the compression is not compression is not working or if it's too high you would think oh the compressor sounds better but it's just really louder and you know anything that's louder we perceive better <laughs> in a sense so let me just loop this and we're going to just try to hear the difference so just close your eyes i'm going to tell you on and off Okay, so this is off. This is on. You can just hear more of the texture of the sound, like, listen more towards the low end. So, yeah, like I said, if you can't really hear that, that's fine. Just start getting some training in. But for um, beginners, trust me, if you match up your original sound to your compression sound and then you A, B it on and off, keep doing that a couple of times. Then you're going to start hearing the different subtleties in it. You feel me? Like, just kind of, you got to really be focused. Like I said, it's like the Call of Duty game. Like, if you're the sniper 
and your scope is going up and down, like you got to make sure you get it focused on the target. This is how you really get better at things. Like, just pay attention, man. Pay attention to what needs to be done. Anyways, like and subscribe if you like the video. Share with your other producer friends if you found this helpful. And I might actually um, continue on with the compressor series because there's a lot to it that I do want to show you guys and a lot more context situations so that once you have a lot of um, different contexts, then you can see like the bigger picture of things. So thank you and have a nice day.